Greetings, everyone. Core here. It's time for another midnight review. Still trying to think of something to call this since it is early morning now, but we'll just stick to the same old, same old. <laughs> so, this week, of course, by the title of this video, I went to go see Star Trek Beyond. And, you know, that's it's the trilogy so far. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to make more uh, because they seem to do really well and they're actually really good for sci fi and everything. Even though we don't like Star Trek, it's still a good jumping off point kind of to get you into it if you start at the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek um, compared to the original Star Trek movies, which have been you know hit or miss, where these three have pretty much been you know on point, if not really impressive, especially the first one was really impressive, really good. Um, the second one, of course, probably is the weaker of the three. Uh, I think Beyond does a little bit better job. Um, setting up its villain, its villain, uh, making it more threatening in a way. Also, just like the visuals, there's a lot more space and planetary stuff compared to the other ones, I guess. Um, can't really <laughs> describe it too well, but it's really cool the planet they get stuck on and everything. Um, some of the, the visuals, some of the weaponry, some of the gadgets and everything that they do. Um, so it's pretty cool to see that. and. It's just a really cool scene towards the end that's really, I don't want to spoil it. You kind of see it building up and coming, but it's so awesome, though. <laughs> I love it. It's kind of a callback to the first uh, movie, uh, one of the first scenes when you first meet Kurt. So there's a lot of hint for you. But, yeah, so this villain, of course, you know, the second one, it was Khan. Um, the first one, it was the Romulan that had gone through time uh, with the original Spock and this one is I guess you could say kind of a new guy out of uh, you know almost out of nowhere in a way and it's pretty interesting how they set him up it's pretty cool uh, there's a little hints and stuff like who he is uh, that's laced through the whole movie hopefully I'm not spoiling too much but excuse me it is very hot but um yeah it's really good I like it like I said, I like this villain a little bit better than uh, Khan from the J.J. Abrams universe, I guess we get to call the Star Trek movies. Because they're like sequels. They're not so much remakes because it's, I guess, alternate timeline kind of set up. But, yeah. So, this one is really interesting because Kurt's kind of going through, like, I guess in a, in a way, a midlife crisis. Uh, of course, he's a lot younger than most midlifers. But... Yeah, it's kind of like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, now you've gotten here, what do you do? You know, the mundane has set in, the regularity of everything kind of has, you know, taken over daily life, and now what? And this kind of gives them, you know, the kick in the butt again to how cool space is, pretty much, and how being on the frontier of space and finding these things it's really fun and really interesting. Uh, I think that says a lot. I think space is probably one of the coolest things, most unexplored thing that we have. So I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the characters are really good. The um, I can't think of her name. The one you see in the trailer is the chick that has the white skin with the black marks. Um, she always reminds me of the Hulk's wife from uh, World War Hulk for some reason. And she's pretty badass, so it's pretty cool. They have a little similarities, but yeah, that's just me. <laughs> you know, comic book nerd. Uh, I just make, you know, comparisons a lot. And she's pretty badass, so it's pretty interesting to see. Everyone gets their spotlight again. It's pretty impressive to see how we have these iconic characters that, you know, you, a lot of people grew up with, and a lot of people are starting to grow up with them now. And nobody, I mean, yeah, it's Kurt, you know, is usually the main star, and he gets the more screen time, but everyone gets their, you know, just dues, pretty much. You know, everybody has their moments, everyone gets, you know, a part, <laughs> in a way. And that's pretty cool, that's actually pretty impressive for such, you know, a large cast that they have. I mean, it's really like eight people that share, you know, screen time and they all have their old they all have their own individual <laughs> excuse me. 
they all have their individual personas, abilities, you know, they all play to those strengths that they have. And of course they always play on the you know, and work through their weaknesses as well. So it's pretty I guess it's really impressive. Um, the, f the one thing I didn't notice, Simon Pegg wrote this one. I'm pretty sure he helped write the other two too as well because it kind of shows um, how well each character is kind of brought up, how well they all have their, like I said, I'm just repeating myself, how they all have their own special moments. But yeah, um, it's a really good movie. I definitely recommend it. Uh, the Star Trek you know, trilogy of the sequels, I guess you could say, of the original, are pretty impressive how good the quality has been, how everything kind of blends together, you know, that's always a hard part when you have sequels, uh, you know, you could tell when it differs a little bit, it's almost like a Marvel universe where, you know, they all have, they all look the same, like if they were shot back to back, you know, they all have that Lord of the Rings feel, they all have that, um, you know, the new Star Wars movies, I guess you could say, even the prequels, you know, have that feel. It's like, you could tell these were shot in order, right after, the, you know, they could have been shot right after each other, and that's pretty impressive, I gotta say, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, so, like I said, acting's great, character's great, uh, story's really great, <laughs> uh, visuals are amazing, there's actually some really cool scenes. It has a nice pace. It's not too slow, not too fast. Uh, there's a few twists and turns here and there, which are really impressive. And really, and there's of course a few jokes thrown in there every now and then, which, you know, kind of break the you know tropes of a lot of things. And really, it's refreshing to see, you know, at least at least to say the least, at least um, how they actually kind of, you know break the meta a little bit, they kind of break the fourth wall a little bit. They don't just always follow this narrative that's been written out, you know, by so many movies before. Of course they still use a few of them, but like I said, I mean, nothing's original anymore, but everything could feel original. And like I say, it's a good movie. Definitely go see it. I hope it does really well. Uh, I do hope for a fourth one. Uh, I feel the fourth one's going to be really crazy. I mean, they keep amping it up in a way. Uh, it's, I wonder what, the, I want to see what the end game is for sure. And I feel like it would actually pay off really well. So here's hoping for more. But definitely, definitely you'll see this. It's probably the best sci-fi movie this year. Uh, I don't count comic book movies as sci-fi because... Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, so far it's definitely in my top picks for this summer. And probably going to be for this year. But we shall see. Because next week is Suicide Squad. And I am definitely looking forward to that one. I keep watching the trailers. I keep listening to Heathens. And I can't stop. So until next time, guys. Later.